Hello all, welcome back to Refactoring Python Code. Today we're starting a new section on removing Python anti-patterns. In the last section, we introduced the idea of refactoring and what refactoring can do. So we know that the main objective of refactoring is to remove technical debts by cleaning up the code, making the code simpler, better documented, and more thoroughly tested. Now that we know the benefits and opportunities of which we can refactor our Python code, let's look at some specific patterns that could point us to opportunities to refactor code in a particular way. In this section, we're going to take a look at three broad topics. Number one, we're going to have an overview of Python anti-patterns. Number two, I want to have various types of Python anti-patterns introduced. And number three, I'm going to go through some playbooks for removing anti-patterns. Overview of Python anti-patterns. In this video, we're going to do this overview using four steps. Number one, we're going to introduce the idea of Python anti-patterns. Number two, we're going to talk about our playbook, which is spotting the problem and then fixing the problem. Number three, I'm going to quickly bring you through the types of Python anti-patterns out there, and then also talk about some playbooks for removing anti-patterns. So let's dive right into it. What are Python anti-patterns? There are Python patterns, which are Pythonic ways of coding or solving a particular problem that you're encouraged to use when you're doing Python programming. So the anti-pattern is the antithesis of good programming behavior. These are patterns where if you recognize this, that's a symptom of bad code or unclean code. And you should use this as an opportunity to recognize the relevant recipe for addressing this anti-pattern, right? So some anti-patterns point to duplicate code. Some anti-patterns point to redundant code. Some anti-patterns point to code that should be encapsulated with an object-oriented construct instead of using long lists of, let's say, switch case statements or if-then-else statements, right? So the playbook is very simple. I want to show you the types of problems and their symptoms in the next few videos. And then for each problem we discuss, I'm going to show you the routine fix, right? So it makes it very easy for you to then go back, look at your own code, and start seeing these patterns, but you know that they're anti-patterns, so that you then apply the fix I teach you here and make your overall code base better. The other thing that we're going to explore is also how can we leverage tools like Visual Studio Code to replicate what we've done manually. So sometimes we can do this, sometimes we can't. In the last section of this course, I'm going to talk about very powerful refactoring tools that aren't Visual Studio Code, but in the next few chapters, wherever po possible, I'm going to help you leverage functions within Visual Studio Code to do the refactoring. So again, the playbook is, I'm going to teach you how to spot the problem, how to spot the Python anti-pattern, and then I'm going to show you the fix to this problem. So what are the playbooks for removing these anti-patterns? So we can first think about separating the general and specific when it comes to code. So general are things like a company website is fairly general. You would never have a situation where when a lead goes from a lead to a customer, their company website changes. And specific things like if a lead is a lead, then we have specific attributes like how many touch points have we done to engage this lead. Or when there's a customer, we will have specific fields like who is the customer success manager. Separating the general and the specific is one of the playbooks to disentangle code and also remove redundant code, right? Keeping it simple are classes of playbooks where recognizing a complex code pattern and knowing a shortcut to, or like a standardized way to simplify it. Moving features around is a playbook for just simply relocating one function from one class to another to make it more logically coherent. Splitting and merging functions and classes 
means that, for example, when we solve a very long function, we can split it into smaller functions. Or when we have too many functions, then we can just merge functions together. The last playbook is to relocate where data is stored. So the example there we have was the company website, because customer now takes the company website from the lead. And so now we have two copies of the same information. By relocating this data to a super class or a parent class, which solely exists to store the details for a person, and regardless of what status it, he is or she is in our CRM, we can relocate where this data is stored to make our program simpler. And that wraps up this video. We've just learned what are Python anti-patterns. We've learned a playbook. The playbook is we spot the anti-pattern, spot the problem, and then we fix the problem. We talked about five types of Python anti-patterns, and we talked about five playbooks for removing anti-patterns.